Hello and welcome to Talk the Walk. We are here at Newtown, which is one of our favourite places on the Isle of Wight, and we're going to show you why. Newtown is the only national nature reserve on the Isle of Wight, and during the winter, the creeks and estuary are full of life. Winter wildfowl and waders migrate here during the colder months from their breeding grounds further afield, making it the perfect spot to go bird watching. Widgeons come to Britain to escape the freezing conditions of Scandinavia and Russia. Male teal and yellow tails travel from as far away as Siberia. Before becoming the quiet backwater which Newtown now is, it was once a bustling medieval town which played a huge role in the brickmaking industry. The town fell into decline after failing to compete with the nearby towns of Newport and Yarmouth. Brothers William, Henry and Alfred Prangnell were renowned local brickmakers in Newtown. They first set up their business in 1866, but a storm washed away the whole brickyard soon after it had opened. The brothers lived a remote and self-sufficient existence. They were considered an eccentric family who used an individual dialect, which was difficult to understand. The intricate products made by the Pragnalls were much sought after. Throughout their 50 years of production, Pragnalls Newtown bricks were all made by hand. The only machinery on the site appears to have been a horse-driven clay mixer. Finished bricks were taken away by the barges that brought in coal for the kiln from cows. Brick making at Newtown ceased shortly before the First World War. Annie, the last of the Prangnell family, moved away in 1954. So if you have a yellow brick house built before World War I, most likely the bricks came from the Pragnell's Newtown works, just like this cottage here. Here is the Church of the Holy Spirit, which dates from 1835 by the architect A.F. Livesey and was built on the site of a ruined medieval chapel. We are stood outside Newtown Old Town Hall, which was built in 1699, although it is likely an official building has stood on site since the 13th century. In 1584, Elizabeth I granted Newtown the right of parliamentary representation. A growing interest in politics in the late 17th century is likely to have influenced the decision to enlarge the town hall to its present size. Newtown was represented by two members of parliament, one of which was George Canning. He was foreign secretary while he represented Newtown and later became prime minister. Ferguson's gang were a group of young women, formed in 1927, with the aim of protecting historic buildings from demolition and conserving landscapes and views of outstanding natural beauty. They wore masks and used fictitious names such as Red Biddy, Sister Agatha and Bill Stickers. If it wasn't for the group purchasing the Old Town Hall, it probably wouldn't still be standing today. Salt was produced at Newtown up until the 1930s, and evidence of this large-scale industry can still be seen on the reserve today. Salt production was an important industry in Anglo-Saxon times. Before refrigeration was developed, salt was used to preserve foods like meat, fish and vegetables. If you lived by the coast, the easiest way to produce salt was by extraction from seawater. In the late medieval period, the whole coastline would have been covered with salt ponds. The salt industry at Newtown dates as far back as the 17th century when there were 14 salt pans here. By the 1930s it had become cheaper to transport salt dug up from underground mines in Cheshire or on the continent than to make it at Newtown. This copse used to be medieval meadowland up until around 1800. 
The meadows were no longer grazed during the first half of the 19th century, and bushes and trees began to grow. By 1862, the meadow was covered in trees. Here the copse opens out to this stunning view, so it is not hard to see why Newtown is one of our favourite places to visit. up to this particular spot was very muddy to walk through and incredibly windy, so although we didn't stay too long at the hide, it was a beautiful moment to have Brent geese fly over us. Now for the final part of our walk we are going to go through the old vicarage. The old vicarage is roughly a two minute circular walk, which is just as well as the light was starting to fade. Mm -hmm. 